for joining us at our next master event. Let's give a warm welcome to Masha Ibeshit, executive coach, best-selling author, founder and chairperson at Think Beyond Group Investor, who will be sharing with us the keynote lecture, Impact, Develop Your People Enhance Your Company Success. Please be welcome, Masha, I Masha Ibeshit. Before starting, let's see a profile video. Masha Ibeshitz is executive coach, consultant, founder, and chairperson at Think Beyond, a global collective of leadership professionals. In the past 25 years, she helped thousands of leaders worldwide to tackle their individual and organizational challenges in order to make business impact happen. Since 1996, Masha accompanied the boards of multinational corporates and highly rated startups as a consultant for leadership development and facilitator. She designed, delivered, and evaluated extended leadership journeys together with her impact partners. Two long-term projects were prestigiously awarded in the field of leadership training programs. Masha is known as a trusted advisor and sounding board for executives around the globe. As a graduated business economist, Masha filled leadership positions in various branches and also renowned teaching positions on university level. In 2015, Masha became the first German-speaking Kirkpatrick facilitator. She published three best-selling books dedicated to impact on leadership and learning success. Next to Think Beyond, Masha serves as member of the advisory board at the innovation incubator What a Venture and as Chief Transfer Enabler at the Institute for Transfer Effectiveness. We are very pleased to be connected with you today. Welcome, Masha Ibeshit. Can you hear me? Thank you for your kind words. And I also want to thank Jorge Limon Robles, Director of Talent Management and Vice Rector for Continuing Education, who invited us to be with you here today. Impact, constant learning and development is essential for any sustainably successful organization and for all individuals within it. And to develop your existing workforce is often an excellent choice, particularly when there is more request on labor force than offered. But how? Wouldn't it be great if we would have, let's say, a magic wand? A magic wand that makes sure that learning and development happens. For instance, send them to a training, bling, and if you want to develop your people, train them, bling, and if it doesn't work, guess what? Send them to another training, bling, or as I lately learned, magia. Please, get me right. Giving people the opportunity to attend trainings is an essential element for sustainable learning and development. But we all might also have already noticed that training by itself won't do the magic, no bling. If there is a magic, then it is about transferring learning into contribution to results. And this requires more than learning events. It requires a complete journey that strongly supports the on-the-job application of learnings. I have the honor to share with you some scientifically proven key concepts, techniques, and tips to successfully face this challenge. For more than 20 years, I was working in the field of learning and development, being always driven by making an impact. So over the years, like many of learning and development professionals, I developed many tools to support transfer. And reflecting on the success and the feedback of my customers, it worked. Coming from the practical side, I got more and more interested in the work of many great researchers. 
researchers on transfer effectiveness like Jim Kirkpatrick and Robert Brinkhoff. And in 2016, I had the honor to meet another researcher, Dr. Ina Weinbauer. She was on the way to transfer her PhD work to transfer on transfer effectiveness into a book for practitioners. And she invited me to enrich her science with my practically proven tools. And out of this collaboration, I will share with you the powerful 12 levers of transfer effectiveness and why so many people around the globe are so passionate about it. Um, a bit more precisely, after these 45 minute session, three things should have happened. You should know more about the research on what makes training really work and the 12 levers to manage transfer effectiveness. You should have received at least three practical tools to promote transfer. And you will also find those tools in the download section of my conference profile. After these 45 minutes, you should also know exactly what you are going to do next to further increase the positive impact of learning and development events. And, oh, one more thing. We prepared an interactive speech for you. Be ready to interact and please prepare, I have it here, please prepare a post-it note and a pen at your table or close to you. At a certain point in time, I will ask you to use both. Julia, Julia, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. Julia, our technical facilitator, will guide us all through this. So let's go. Before we dive into the topic, I would love to learn a bit more about you. And therefore, I have prepared two questions for you. Two questions which, I will, which we will work on by using Mentimeter. Most of you might know the tool already. And may I ask you to go to www.menti.com. Any, 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 anything else, Julia, to well, add here? Just no. going there, entering the code. Wonderful. Okay, give it a try. Enter the code or scan the QR code. And uh, are we ready for the first yes. question? Wonderful. Oh, and the answers are already, <laughs> first answers are coming, great. Right? So my first question is, who is with us today? What is your role in the field of learning and development? Because each role gives a different perspective. It is like looking through different glasses. Are you here in the role of a trainer, instructional designer, or e-learning developer? A training manager, L&D manager, HR manager? Or are you here in your role as a leader who wants to develop his or her team members? For example, by sending participants to a training, or are you here in any other role? And guess what? If you are here in multiple roles, just let us know. Okay, so please vote now. Okay, I see we have several roles presented, represented. During this, the session, I also invite you to follow this keynote from your different perspectives. Okay, wonderful, great. So let, let's move to the second question. My second question is, I mean, cross your heart. How well is in your organization, how well is your organization doing in terms of transfer on trainings? Are you more on the side of A, we achieve results that are both measurable and sustainable, or B, I think there is still some improvement potential. Or do you feel like actually transfer is really our weak spot? Okay, so thank you for your honesty. And guess what? Option B and C are exactly what many organizations and people are facing. So you're in good company. And so it also shows me that the topic that we are discussing now is of a certain relevance because hopefully my information to you will give you some inspiration that you really can apply and that maybe you even want to apply right after this session. But let's have a look on that. So now as many organizations are facing the same situation as you giving feedback here, also researcher noticed that. 
So there is even a study that shows how the situation is in many cases. So if you ever need to explain the transfer problem to somebody in your organization, I recommend using this picture from Professor Robert Brinkerhoff, who has 30 years of experience in evaluating training programs. He says, on the average, only about 15% of training participants try to apply what they have learned and get positive results. About 70% try to apply but give up, and about 15% don't even try it. So what Robert Brinkerhoff is saying is that 85% of what people learn in training is not used in the workplace in the long term. Well, that's not satisfying at all, right? I imagine now that I see you all nodding, or at least some. But Robert Brinkerhoff also showed that the results of your training could look like this, where 85% apply and get positive results. And believe me, I am working on reaching that target for many years now, together with so many other people around the globe. And when Ina Weinbauer saw this perspective, she decided to find out what it takes to make trainings more effective. Her plan was to find the holy grail of transfer success. Well, however, she quickly realized that she wasn't the only one. <laughs> and transfer researchers are at work already for more than 100 years, and they found more than 100 determinants that influence transfer success. Well, let's have a look, yeah? So please get ready. 110 years of research on one slide. Now, ta-da! Uh, that's a lot, right? Um, actually, too much, right? And some of these elements are great for scientists but not so much practical help, right? Let me give you just a little example. Take one of the factors from the trainee area, the factor cognitive abilities. So basically intelligence. Researchers have found that intelligent people transfer more than others. Aha. Uh -huh. So what could we apply from that? I mean, should we send participants to an intelligence test before each training to decide if they should attend, attend or not? I mean, that would be really strange, right? So here's what was done to come to an effective approach. Dr. Weinbauer dropped all the factors that cannot or hardly be influenced or controlled by HRD professionals. And guess what? This is how we ended up with only 12 levers. And they are called levers because each of them creates a leverage effect that helps to maximize the impact of people development measures. Here they are. In order to create the biggest impact on the transfer effectiveness in people development, we find three relevant areas. Trainees, training design, and the organization, meaning the environment in which people development is provided. Some of the levers might look familiar. Others might sound new to you. And as I saw from your answers on, on the first question, that there are so many also colleagues yeah, in, uh, in the L&D area. Um, it could happen that when you start to work with those levers, that you start to sense like, oh, I'm already doing so many things, but maybe you also notice how great it is if you put things together and get it in a structured way. At least this is something where I benefited a lot from that when I started to work with it. So for today, you will get scientific and practical insights from three levers of those 12. Support of supervisors, 
transfer volition. No, stay curious what is behind that word. And transfer planning. Let's start. Let's start with support from supervisors. So if you are here in the role as a leader, and I saw some of you yeah, voted that you're also here in, in the role of a leader. If you are here in the role as a leader who wants to support his team's development in order to enhance your organization's success, this one is especially for you. If you enjoy other roles on transfer effectiveness, and you know some of those supervisors who maybe are not with you in the room or at home in your home office, listen closely. Maybe you want to share some of the contents later. So let's have a look on the study. In this study, they took a closer look at a no improvement group, a group in which nothing had changed following the leadership development program in, in this organization. They compared it with a high improvement group of the same leadership program that had made big changes in performance, such as their processing speed, sales, cycle times, and so on. Now, I'd just like to show you the three biggest differences between the two groups. Just remember, both groups were attending the same development program, and it was said that it was an awesome program. So it seems that the HR facilitators, the trainers, the developers did a lot of things really right. Still, there were these two very different results. Now, let's find out what was the major difference. The first difference is, Julia, please click. <laughs> Thank you. Supervisor support. The high improvement group had significantly more frequent one-on-one -on -one meetings between the trainee and the supervisor where they discussed how the trainee could best apply what he has learned in the program. The second big difference, supervisor support. In the high improvement group, the trainees said that their supervisor has the attitude that training has a positive impact and is important and valuable. And the third big difference, make an educated guess, supervisor support. In the high improvement group, many of the people involved said that their supervisor actively recognizes and rewards their improvement. Supervisor support is nearly always among the top reasons for success or failure. So, how can we ensure that supervisors promote and demand the application of what trainees have learned? Wouldn't that be great? Dear leaders out there, understand and respect. You are important. You have an impact. No matter if you've been aware of it or not, when it comes to development, you have an influence for the good or for the bad. But HR already takes good care of our development initiatives, you might argue. Well, if that is the case, congratulations. Obviously, you are having a strong strategic HR partner at your side. And at the same time, to make a development initiative a real success, it also needs you, the leader, in addition to motivated trainees and the great training design. Second, how we as also HRD professionals can support that leaders support more <laughs> the transfer is when it is easy. Leaders get involved when it's made easy for them. How can we do that? We can offer them tools and measures that are easy to use and that are seen by the leaders as something supporting instead of time-consuming additional work. Small steps, easy interventions. These easy interventions, they guide here the way. Instead of a heavy pre-training meeting with a time-consuming long form to fill in, 
Just have a coffee to go. Have a coffee to go with your employee before the training. You see here two very simple checklists with only a few questions that you can go through together with your team member. These checklists are also available for you in the download section. I mean, doing a small thing like this, can this be really effective? Well, yes. Studies show that even a 15 minute conversation like this significantly increases transfer success. And you know what? Hmm. You can even assign the team member who participates to proactively ask for the conversation with the superior. And third, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear leaders, supervisors deserve to understand what's in it for me. What benefit or payoff do I get as a manager if I support transfer? To start this journey and help the leaders to commit, we developed another tool, which I will share with you now. It is the self-check for managers. It helps leaders to reflect if they already get the maximum out of the trainings their team members attend. It is a self-reflection and done voluntarily by the leaders. Just a five minute action. So going through this self-check, leaders reflect about items like, I have communicated very clearly that I consider this training useful and meaningful and that it is important that he or she attends. And then the next step is, please rate yourself on a scale from absolutely yes to absolutely no. Um, as many people do, also leaders love scoring. So by the end of the self-check, you get a score that gives you feedback on how well you do as a leader to make use out of the training program. Here is what the leaders learn about themselves. When you rate below 35 points, it says, with your managerial approach, you risk wasting both your team members' time and your organization's money. So that's quite tough, I know. On the other hand, if you score high, then it says, you are a true role model when it comes to getting the most out of a training for your organization, your team, and the attendee. Honestly, I've already been surprised a number of times by how effective this simple self-check is. For instance, we have had participants in a big automobile organization. I hope this is the proper English word, automobile, but they produce cars, yeah? So, uh, and they've told us, our manager didn't just do the self-check for himself. He suddenly brought it along to the kickoff meeting of the whole program and asked us as employees how we rated him on these criteria. He wanted our feedback, which was absolutely amazing. Other leaders told us that they will include this reflection in an annual appraisal interview to get, again, feedback from their team members. I mean, particularly in this VUCA world, an agile and lifelong learning is essential also for leaders. And one final example, one of our customers even used this self-check to show young talents how seriously they take development. And again, you will find also this transfer tool in the download section if you want to try it out for yourself or share it with someone who could benefit from it. So, support of leaders is essential. Science shows us, and real life too. At the same time, it is also essential that the learner himself or herself really follows through and invests enough willpower 
to implement learnings sustainably in the job. Research calls this ability transfer volition. Still, it might sound a little cryptic now, right? But when you see the next slide, I promise, it will be immediately clear that volition is something that all of us are very familiar with. Julia, give us a look. Even if I don't speak Spanish, and I had a lovely person who helped me to translate this, <laughs> also the slides in Spanish, I think I also get the message, and I'm sure you do. And I don't know how many of you also feel like that sometimes, actually, to be very honest, I also do sometimes, particularly now in these days before the, the year, the new year comes. Yeah? So this is how it affects us. And colloquially, we would call volition willpower. And it is quite often connected with, let's say, a funny idea, yeah? with the idea of a weaker self or an inner demon. Mm. We have this idea that there is this little demon inside of us and he is preventing us from doing all the things that are good for us. Well, actually, it might feel like this. But science tells a completely different story. It leads us to an amazing discovery in terms of willpower, which is so essential also for implementing learnings. A discovery that made the psychological work of Roy Baumeister really, really famous. Specifically, Roy Baumeister found that willpower is like a battery. So every time we use willpower, energy is drained from the battery. At some point, the battery will be dead. And we will need to recharge it before we regain a supply of willpower. So... If we can't manage to exercise or keep our hands away from the chocolate, it doesn't mean that we are lazy or weak. It just means that we maybe already used all our willpower for that day to eat healthy radish. In all research, Roy Baumeister showed, showed the following result. Willpower depletes if we use it. Dear colleagues, dear leaders, dear audience, for people who want to follow through and really implement what they have learned, there is still hope. Because we found two approaches that show sustainably positive impact. First, create a learning journey in a way that it consumes as little willpower of the participants as possible. Again, make it easy. Second, find a way to make the implementation of learning stand out among other topics or challenges of the day. Here, I need to show you something else. And I don't know if you can see it or if you maybe have to make it a little bit bigger. Because what I need to show you is this one here. This is, yeah, thank you. This is a helicopter. And it's not any helicopter. It's a helicopter with a remote control. And this is a real life tool of a huge organization I met uh, that they used to improve transfer volition. And the story goes like this. In this organization, um, it was uh, the target to support the leaders uh, in become much more effective and better in self-reflection. Self but the environment was not very inviting to make a pause and reflect. Everybody was very busy. So they chose a playful and effective way. Many of the leaders enjoyed playing with technical gadgets. So every graduate of the program received a little remote helicopter with the task to play with it five to 10 minutes a day and to reflect while playing. Okay, one might laugh about it. One might find this childish or unusual. Data and evaluation showed 
In that organization, it really worked. People started to reflect more, even together in their peer groups. And those little helicopters were helpful and humorous reminders. So when it comes to volition, be creative and be kind to yourself and others. Now you know where the depletion comes from. And now you hopefully with these short inputs also have a clue how to recharge that willpower battery. A goal without a plan is just a wish. Antoine de saint exupéry Therefore, let's have a final and short look on the lever of transfer planning. When it comes to the end of a great training program, trainees typically look like this guy. He leaves the training with a big backpack full of all the great stuff that he learned in that learning event. And what might be his feelings or thoughts? Maybe something like, I need to review all the stuff from training again and think about where and how I can apply these things. Well, good intentions, right? Unfortunately, we know that this is hardly going to happen. Why? Because for most people, there is no time for things like that. So what we need when it comes to transfer effectiveness, what we need is this. We need trainees with a lightweight backpack that only contains the necessary information and some concrete finished plan of how to apply it. The question is, how can we pack the backpack in a transfer-friendly way? Guess what? Again, research gives us clear and convincing answers for that. Let's take one more trip to the field of research, this time sports research, sports research, and to a study with people who tried to do more sports. The researchers randomly assigned 248 adults to one of three groups. Every group got a special intervention, but here are the results first. In group one, 38% exercised. In group two, 35%. But in group three, an incredible 91% of the participants did. Now, what did they give them that makes such a big difference? You will be amazed by how easy the secret is. So, group one was the control group. They normally get the strange tasks. Before the experiment, uh, they were asked to read three paragraphs of an unrelated novel, <laughs> which had nothing to do with the experiment at all. Group two was the motivation group. They got some information on the benefits of exercising. Better health needs to reduce stress. Hmm. As you can see, this motivational information somehow also did not have so much effect. So, what was the task for group three, who exercised nearly three times as often as the other groups? It is so easy and trivial. They were simply asked to complete one single sentence. And the sentence was, during the next week, I will do at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on Monday at 5 p.m. at the gym. Exhale, smile, nod, <laughs> or whatever reaction you feel inside. Sentences like this, 
are called implementation intentions or mini plans. Simply formulating an intention nearly tripled the chances for really doing it. The same effect was found in a lot of other studies as well. Implementation intentions, double or triple success rates in taking medication regularly, in losing weight, in eating healthier, in getting better results in tests, and even in finishing projects on time. Whatever we want to do and apply, if we formulate an intention and thereby develop a plan for the specific action that we are going to take, it doubles or even triples the probability that we will really do it. Scientists even call those mini plans baby steps. And that also applies for our training participants. If we want them to apply what they have learned in training, we need to make sure that they make an action plan and formulate concrete intentions. The rule of thumb is to reserve 10 to 20% of the training time for transfer planning, be it throughout the training or at least at the end of the training. And guess what? Now it's your turn. At the beginning, I asked you to prepare a post-it note and a pen. And now, may I invite you to take both now and write down your very own, very next step you want to implement and to try out after this session. Your gold nugget that you take with you, that you take from this keynote, and I'm sure also from other keynotes, from other sessions, from panel discussions, but please make it small, make it simple. And for sure, remind yourself that a baby step is very powerful. Your baby step so small, should be so small, that you could even do it already right now after this session when you go for lunch. I hope I calculated the time difference now, right? Because in my place in Europe, it's uh, in the evening, yeah? But I understand that you go for lunch now. <laughs> but be careful. Remember, whatever you write down now, your gold nugget, the thing that you want to implement, the likelihood that you do it is at 91%. Having said all of that, I want to invite you to visit the download area to get the checklists and the transfer postcard, which summarizes uh, the 12, 12 levers of Dr. Weinbauer, which supports you also to memorize, yeah? and maybe also gives you some impulses to dive a little bit deeper. And in case you want to dive deeper, you are invited also to use the secret code and to explore more. The secret code is there? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, dear colleagues, dear leaders, the audience, wish you all the best. Maybe we meet again at another day and another place. It would be an honor for me. And until then, do your magic to impact development in order to enhance your business success by using the 12 levers with your magia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Masha, for your excellent participation. We invite you to, do, to join us in our next master event at 15, 15 hours Central Time, Mexico. The launching of Data Hub and Living Lab of the Institute for the Future of Education and the keynote panel adoption of learning analytics in Latin America, opportunities and barriers. Thank you very much. <laughs>